I'm genuinely honoured to be uh, at such a glittering event celebrating the achievements of so many uh, genuinely inspirational individuals. It is also important to recognise progress and as Sir Isaac Newton said hundreds of years ago, if I have seen further than others, it is by standing upon the shoulders of giants. We're joined here by a professor known as Jinderverdi, the man behind the science. How does it feel to win this Big Bang? <laughs> I'm very honoured and uh, very grateful yeah. to uh, receive this award and I, let me thank the uh, GG2 organisers uh, for recognising science. Of course, perfect. Well congratulations again on winning the award. Now speaking of Big Bang, I'm sure some of our viewers, our younger viewers have seen the series that is called The Big Bang Theory. Are you a fan of that? <laughs> yes, I do look in, uh, look at the programme. In fact, there's a particle physicist behind it, so a lot of the science there is actually the equations that are written there. Are from so a it's real. Physics. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's physics. Sheldon, yes. isn't it? Sheldon, <laughs> yeah. You were joined your years. I know you uh, studied at Queen Mary's University. Yeah. Jodhi went there as well. I went to the university. Did I did indeed. <laughs> yes. See? So intelligent people go to that university. <laughs> was it always science that you wanted to get into since you were little? How did you know that you wanted to go in into In fact, it was my physics teacher. Okay. Uh, really uh, uh, lit the spark, if you want. Okay. Or sparked my imagination uh -huh. and my uh, interest in, uh, in science and physics in particular. Okay. So so for all of those younger individuals who want to follow in your footsteps, what advice would you give them? I think that if they're excited by science, they should go into science. I'm with my fellow brown people. <laughs> I feel ever so comfortable. I feel a tremendous sense of oneness and unity yeah. Yeah. with this gentleman here. We're his both name beige, is... actually. We're not really brown. We're not fully brown. We've... Okay. It, it's a constant battle, really. Yeah. But I've been really... Do you feel brown or white? Be honest. Like, honestly, I feel more brown than I've ever felt in my life. You're standing next to me. <laughs> this shade of brown releases the inner brownness in me. We should talk about tonight's event. We should. It's called. It's a. It's an event that is supposed to evoke leadership. Uh, I should probably ask you. Um, an episode perhaps where you felt leadership or having leadership like qualities was, was the way for you or, or open set endorsement. You, you're in the comedy um, like spectrum, the comedy facility. That's always a very, very um, difficult road, a difficult path to perhaps craft a career for. Yeah. So how did you perhaps exemplify being a bit of a leader? I don't know if I am, but I just kind of always looked for them. Yeah. Tried other things, couldn't do them. Had a go at stand-up, someone said, have a go. You're quite funny. I did that. And, uh, yeah, I never thought of myself as sort of a pioneer, but just it's something that you're passionate about, so you do it, you love it, keep doing it. Okay. And uh, there are a few more kind of brown comedians now. Not that many, we need more. <laughs> there aren't that many. So I've just won the award for Best Food in the World Company. No, I haven't, I'm kidding. Harry, congratulations. Thank you very well much. done. Thank you. So why did you go into food? So we, we started off by importing and selling rice and had a passion for traveling and obviously different ethnic cultures and we want to explore obviously the foods that they, the ethnic communities over here yeah. require and obviously that's how we built our ranges up. So, so we started off by, first was obviously Caribbean food, so we understand the Caribbean community and, and, the, and the products that they wanted and what, and, and what they wanted for their cuisine and slowly bought these products into the UK. And so you travelled around, tasted all the food? I did, I did a lot of travelling across the far east. What's your favourite place? Jamaica. Ooh, Jamaica. So what's your favourite food? I probably, probably Jamaican food. I love, I love oh, jerk chicken. I love jerk chicken. It, it is actually, to be honest with you, that's my, that's my first favourite food. Second is jerk chicken. So we're here with the wonderful Lutala, who has been working with BBC Radio for over a number of years and obviously has been recognised for this beautiful lady who talks for a living. How does it feel to be winning? Oh, it's, it's fantastic. Winning is good. Yeah. <laughs> How could it be anything else? It's great and it's a real pleasure and a joy. I love what I do. How did you get into the industry? Um, actually, I have friends to thank for that. I always loved radio. I listen to a lot of radio, but I didn't think that 
people like us, people like me, do jobs like that. Mm -hmm. um, but I had fantastic friends at university who kind of said, of course you can do it, why not you? Yeah. Um, and then I sort of hustled and asked people and went up to strangers and said, kiss a job. Uh, and eventually it all came right for me. Oh, perfect. <laughs> so obviously, in, what's been your highlight in the career so far? Uh, gosh, there have been so many. The, the most recent one, I, I've just come back from Guantanamo Bay. I did a whole program last week from the prison looking at the American politics, looking at why um, a prison at Guantanamo that, that President Obama had promised to close okay. still remains open. And that was absolutely fascinating and interesting. I worked on the night that the coalition was formed. That was great. So yeah, lots of really exciting things. That's right, we're sharing our love for words <laughs> and literature. Favourite book? Favourite book? Oh, gosh. Uh, Probably Howard's End by Ian Forster. Oh man, I've got to not a longer pretend I know that one. But, uh, yeah, I could name quite a few, but let's, let's go with that one for now. For me, sorry, I have to Oscar Wilde. Like, yeah. He's just my favourite writer and um, there's a lot of his essays, yes. uh, like Man Under Socialism, and there's a lot of like, certain pertinent like perennial pieces of advice that will always be applicable. Well, a phrase so. that I often say, which is an Oscar Wilde quote, so, which is, the truth is rarely pure and never simple. Look, look at this. Look. Look. Now you're holding here, here. here. with an award. Here's the, here's this, the means, evidence. this means status <laughs> to the dads out there, wearing a purple sari as well. Don't get better than that. <laughs> so just to say, you've been here with uh, two direction. Um, two direction, right. Yeah. Well, so. you're one and I'm the other. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, this interview's going well. <laughs> I'm joined by Nazia Devji, who has just won Young Journalist of the Year. Congratulations, Nazia. How do you feel? Um, shocked and hard. Uh, yeah. So, what brought you on this path of journalism? Um, ever since I've been very young, I've always wanted to do journalism. I think, um, I don't know what it was, watching silly movies or what it was, but I always just knew I wanted to be a journalist. And my family, like, always allowed me to push for that, my dad encouraged me to get Ah, oh, that's good. Yeah. How long have you been doing this journey? Um, 19, 20 months, something like that. Okay. Wow, that's a big accomplishment. Young journeys of the year after such a short time frame. I guess I work in a place where I'm lucky to have the opportunity to do the things I do. Yeah, so what advice would you give those individuals who are starting out your age who want to next year want this award for themselves? I don't know about the award, but it all starts from work experience. Work hard. Um, I put in a lot of extra hours, put in the extra hours, and um, volunteer to do different things. Yeah, just put your hand in things that you can I would miss the Simon Woolley, he's a world class butt kicker. <laughs> That's the truth. That is the truth. That's the truth. Look at these biceps. It's, it's oh. my. It's my these, there you go. You can't see him, but these quadriceps, they, yep. they've uh, kicked it's, many of them. It's my role to shake up our community, to be strong. Exactly. To be strong, to be active, and to have a voice that will change society. Look, this is our time. This is your time. This is our time to change Britain so that we can have a. An equality, a race equality, but actually that serves everybody. Yeah. Serves everybody black and white. Perfect. Perfect. Vote is the, the, the non-white vote. So everyone that is non-white is black. So you're black. Right now you're black. And, and in that, and, and in that, in that we stand together. Yeah. We stand together to fight for racial uh, justice.